Welcome to j -Hep's video on the phloem. Basically the phloem is next to the xylem and it transports sugars up and down the plant. That's what makes it different from the xylem. The xylem only transports the water up a plant and the phloem can transport it either up or down or around. So the structure of it looks like this. You've got um, you've got it split into two sections. You've got the sieve tube elements and you've got the companion cells. So let's focus on the sieve tube elements first. Um, the sieve tube elements aren't really true cells because they don't have a nucleus which and by powers of deduction makes them prokaryotic but it's still not prokaryotic um, as it's got little cytoplasm as well but it's lined up end to end to form a tube like this in which it um, transports sugars especially sucrose and what you should know that sucrose dissolved in water makes sap that, that yellowy substance that comes out of trees sometimes that leaks from the trees so if you taste it it should taste sweet but I wouldn't do that if I were you um, the tube contains cross walls over here so unlike the xylem which the walls have um, which been um, kind of disintegrated and it's just one long wall at the sides it's got cross walls and um, that is called sieve plates and that allows the pores for the sap to flow. Also the sieve tube walls are usually very thin as well. So looking at the um, companion cells that is uh, a great contrast to the sieve cells because it's got a large nucleus and a dense cytoplasm and it's got many mitochondria used for ATP for loading and unloading which we're going to cover later. Um, it also carries out metabolic processes as I said and these two, the companion cells and the sieve tube elements um, are linked through the plasmodesmata which are gaps in between the cell walls in which um, in which the sugars can go through. And that's basically it for the phloem. Uh, stop there.